key principle when building microservices is to limit the data access between services. Each microservice should have exclusive access to its database. This means that in order to access that data, you must make an API call to the service. You're not allowed to simply query the other service's database. This is a bit like dealing with people. If you need access to some information that I have, you can't just read my mind. Uh, you have to actually ask me questions and then wait for me to respond. By preventing direct database access, it allows our services to make decisions about how they respond. They might filter or transform the data when replying to a request, or they might reject the request completely. Limiting access in this way also helps our services evolve internally without having to worry as much about external users. As long as we maintain the API, the structure of the database can be flexible. Because we don't have direct access to another service's database, we have to find other ways to communicate. There are a variety of techniques that can be applied from REST APIs to message queues, but regardless of what we choose, they fall into one of two categories, synchronous or asynchronous communication. Again, think about it like people. We can have a synchronous conversation, or we can communicate asynchronously with text messages or email. However, relying too much on synchronous communication can create a brittle system. What happens if the service we're talking to is unavailable? With synchronous communication, we depend on an immediate response. If that response is delayed, then we have no choice but to fail. This means that a failure in one service has now propagated to another. This can result in larger cascading system failures. Now we can mitigate this with asynchronous events. Event-driven architectures operate by pushing events into a messaging platform. The events can be consumed asynchronously by other services where they will be used to trigger actions or to replicate data. However, in these systems, there is no requirement that all of the services need to be active all of the time. We're expecting that responses may be delayed and therefore we don't need to be surprised if that happens. When a failure occurs, the message flow will stop but the dependent services can still operate with the data they've already replicated. When the failure is resolved, everything can pick up where it left off. This allows event-driven systems to operate with more autonomy. However, pushing events to an external messaging platform creates new problems. How can we publish the events in a consistent manner? During the transaction, we may need to update the state and publish the event but each of these operations is talking to a separate system and our transaction can't cover both of them. If one of these operations fails, then our two systems will be out of sync. Data that exists in one system won't exist in the other. This is known as the dual write problem and it's a common cause of consistency issues in event-driven systems. The transactional outbox pattern allows us to eliminate the dual write problem. Instead, we persist both the state of the domain entity and a log of domain events. They are both persisted in the same database within the same transaction. This ensures that they are always consistent. Either both operations will succeed or they'll both fail. However, this does require a transactional database such as CockroachDB. You can't do this without transactions. We refer to the log of domain events as our outbox table. It records all of the events that we need to publish to our message queue. But how do we get the events from the database into our message queue? To move the events from our database into our queue, we consume them with a separate process. A service or job consumes the messages from the outbox table and publishes them to the message platform. If a message fails to publish for some reason, we don't lose any data. All of the data is safe in our database. This means that we can always retry later, and this guarantees that every message will be published at least once. Now we can write the outbox consumer ourselves. However, CockroachDB has a built-in feature for this. Change Data Capture, or CDC, can detect changes to our outbox table and publish them to a messaging platform such as Kafka. It takes only a few lines of SQL code to set it up, and it handles all of the tracking and retry logic for us. 
With CDC in place, we can write events to the Outbox table and rely on CDC to ensure that they make it into the queue.